One of the things that's important to be able to differentiate when working on systems is the difference between text files and binary files. Thus far, all of the files that we've worked with, all of the file reading has dealt with textual files. We've been able to read strings in, we've been able to read sentences in and delineate them based on spaces. That's all well and good, but the bulk of the files we deal with in computer systems are actually binary files. So let's take a look at what this difference is. So here we have a part of a file. This part of the file is four bytes in length here. In the first case here, what it's doing is representing the string or the value 1, 2, 3, 4 in hex. So we can see that this is actually being stored where this is the least significant byte over here, this is the most significant byte for the number 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we could actually translate that into the hexadecimal equivalent and show what it would be in each one of those locations. So this is a binary format for this number right here. If this were a textual string being represented 1, 2, 3, 4, we'd have the byte 49, 50, 51, and 52, representing here the ASCII representations of those values 1, 2, 3, and 4. The other difference between binary and textual files is textual files have new line characters and they can be read delineating based on spaces or other things like that. Binary files are just treated as binary bytes. They're just essentially an array of bytes. But let's see the first way that we can handle this. Now in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you examples where you are using raw system calls to read these files. So in a raw system call, the first thing we need to do is actually open the file up. So to open the file, basically we're going to invoke the system call open, passing in the path and a set of flags that are used to determine how we're reading the file or how we're opening the file. We can open a file for read only, for write only, or we can open a file for binary read and writing simultaneously. We can also append or we can create files if the file doesn't exist. These options are very similar to the binary file options that you saw in your freshman programming class when you dealt with binary files. So once we have the file opened with the open command, then what we want to do is we want to read from that file. So to read from that file, what we're going to do is read from a given file descriptor. Notice that the open operation here that we have, it's returning an int where that integer returns an integer file descriptor of the name file. So it's a number representing the file that's opened. Here we're going to read from that file descriptor, placing the data into a given buffer, and reading up to the number of bytes. The return value from this read will be the number of bytes that was read. If for some reason there's no way of reading because we've reached the end of the file, we're going to return zero and have no other options. So I've got a file here called binary file demo. And I've got some of the includes to get at these standard options. And my program here, what it's going to do is, <coughs> excuse me, read in a file if, or check the usage you've passed in on the command line, open the file for reading, whatever is passed in is argument v1, going to read that into a buffer of 16 bytes. So we're going to read 16 bytes at a time into it and then we're going to print each of those 16 bytes out as a hexadecimal string onto the to the display. When we're done we're going to or after every 16 we're going to put a new line in. When we reach or when the, the read count is zero or less than zero indicating that we're done we're going to exit out of this do while loop. So you'll notice we're using a do while loop in this scenario. Last thing, very very imperative, you must close the file when you're done with it. So here we have an example of this running. 
So I'm going to go into the directory here and into debug. And if I were to cat out binary file demo, which is the program right now to the console, we're going to get a lot of garbage because there's a lot of numbers or a lot of characters that cannot be printed properly. But if I do or run the program binary file demo like so, we can read that in and we can see the individual hex values representing each part of that file being printed out. So this is that whole file as it's printing out to the console one byte of the binary file at a time. Now you'll notice that a lot of these have ASCII numbers or, or hexadecimal numbers that would represent strings. It's very common for there to be characters inside of a file. There's some that are empty, like for example here's a null, which would cause a problem if we were to try and read this in as a string, because it would be the end of the string. You can also use the C standard library functions here that are defined in the reference manual here for fread and fwrite. In this scenario what you're going to do is instead of just opening the file you're actually going to call fopen which is going to open a stream. Open a stream you're going to pass in a constant char pointer to the file name notice that this is constant because it doesn't change and we're going to pass in a constant char pointer for the mode which is how we're going to open it. We can open it for reading or read binary for reading write or write binary same thing here A is a pen so if we want to be able to write to the end of the file instead of overwriting the file we would append we can put the plus on for updating so on and so forth <coughs> And the whole rest of the documentation is described in this. So F open, what it does is it returns a pointer to the object controlling the stream. So this is, in our case, going to be a file pointer. Very, very similar to what we get out in terms of the handle from the other mechanism. Syntactically not exactly the same. Now once we have this with this F open, then what we can do is we can do an F read to read from that file. So fread is going to read from the binary file. So when we read, what we're going to do is we're going to read into a buffer where the pointer that we're going to write data into is the buffer. The size of how much we want to read, so if it's structures or whatever, whatever the size, the amount of time or amount of things we want to try to read at once is going to go in the size. The number of items is going to be how many we're going to read at a time and this here is the file pointer representing the stream that we're going to be reading from. So this is the pointer returned by the fopen function here. And so we will read from that and read as many as we can. Now when we get done with this we also need to close our file. So to close the file we're going to use an fclose method here defined right here well, we'll close passing in the file stream. So let's take a look at the implementation of this solution here. The code is going to look very, very similar. So in this case, we do an F open and we've got this file pointer coming back like so. That line is different. Here, instead of using a read, we're using an F read and the parameters are in a little different order. And then at the end, instead of doing a close, we do an F close. Ultimately, the C library code is calling close, open, and read on all of these things. That's part of the C standard library implementation. Now, for what we're going to be doing in class, both of these will be working appropriately. The bigger difference is this mechanism here using F close and F open may be slightly more portable than reading the files directly. Now this portability here is fine as long as you're in Unix. If you were to try and port this code over to Windows, these methods may not be correct for what you were doing. Whereas if you worked with the higher level, the higher level of abstraction in these F open calls, then you would be in better shape if you tried to make things portable. So that brings 
our discussion of the difference between reading and or reading binary files and textual files to a close.